lore. And um, what happened is that one of the things that was mentioned was that they were talking about if a moderator, one moderator is re that was elected last year, which was David, okay, um, if he was going to run again, uh, you can't like, you're not supposed to start the meeting. The moder David can't be the moderator to moderate his own election. Mm -hmm. And I asked, I said, can our Tinker clerk do it? And they said, no, they want a select board person to do it. And they named the position or they named the um, statute by which that is. It's a uh, select board member will open the town meeting and that is statute 17.2657. And so I would just welcome everyone and introduce chair. the, as a chair, introduce the, uh, the select maybe. board and then um, run the election moderator. Yeah. And yeah. The moderator takes over and does the meeting yes. after that point. So that was just something, something new. Is that um, ISA 17, section 275? It's 17.2657. Huh. Okay. okay. At least we have somebody. That's a good thing. Um, Ed Chase did recommend that the whole warning be read before you go individually, item by item, but he also said that you can also, depending upon what the protocol has been for past practice at your particular town, <laughs> but not necessary. Um, so uh, that was one question. Um, we, we just reviewed over how to amend articles, um, no unwarned business. Um, and it was sort of, it was interesting. It was, again, uh, they talked about not just Brooklyn, they didn't mention Brooklyn, but they talked about that the appointment of treasurers is something that is an important thing to do due to the dearth of volunteerism. And it wasn't the terms that I ever used, but this is something that um, other towns have also order. This is my order. All right. So um, as far as the town meeting review, we'll, um, we'll switch out to talk with um, um, David Parker, 1030 here at Town Hall on Friday morning, and um, just see, just to go over it and see if he has any questions or or anything right. that we can work with. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The next item um, is old business. What I want, it's not necessary to have all these details tonight, but what we need to do is I want to get the final numbers for uh, items 6B, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, I know the heat pumps, there was a, um, you know, there was, we, we bid up to a certain amount, but we didn't use the whole amount. I need to know what was actually spent for the heat pumps okay. and number if you can email that to me. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. Do I'll dig. Um all right. The highway supervisor I think I can put my okay. Uh the highway, I mean it can also go back to accounts payable to see what was paid. Right. So that's um, good too. Jackie, correct. Know, and I, I would have got it that that far. When was that? That was in the summer, that was like uh, August, September. Yeah, like okay. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I can find accounts payable that far back in my Gmail. Well, there's a file cabinet out here that should uh, have, should yeah. have it. Yeah. So just, just want to maybe uh, have it in notes. But if it's also, I can okay. also look at that. I know the date. It was August, September. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, the highway supervisor. We have that amount. We have the amount for the DV fiber. Uh, the grant match for the foundation repairs. Um, I will make a note that due to the um, confusion at last month's last meeting that I did not do, uh, I did not call the question and call for a vote. So I will have to redo that on the next meeting for number uh, 6B number four. And I also need to have the numbers for item number five, the town clerk, the town treasurers raised uh, to $23 an hour. Uh, is going to be paid through the ARPA funding, so there's no tax burden on the uh, citizen. So those are just Doc, we didn't numbers. Do, on four, we didn't do, no. approve it. No, we no. Didn't. when you go back and watch the video, it didn't happen. It got into yeah. Okay. 
by those things. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the other thing we also need to consider about ARPA fund uses and future considerations, Bruce, you had mentioned uh, an interest in following up on the um, following up on the energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I just wanted to let you know that we got another email today. Was it today? March 1st. Yep. From Margo. Did you get it? I read it. Okay. I, about 172? Yes. About, I, 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 I get really serious, serious in it, but I read it. Okay. So I, I have it here. And again, so this is the, as we say, one, one, Something might be phasing out April 1st, but this is phasing in. Yeah, that was good. That was the impression I was getting. And I was also, and I, like I said, I haven't really thoroughly got into it, but the way it sounded to me was each locale can get up to $500,000. No. Okay? Depending on what you're talking about, administrative. Well, like Burlington, or, Mike, but well, not Brookline. I'm well, not saying it will. I'm saying it's, what I'm saying is it's. Excuse me. Let me just turn this. My sister. You can tell her to cut that out. Go take care of free and leave us alone. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. So what I'm driving at, I could be wrong. Happens once in a while. Uh, that there's such an unlimited amount of money in the state right now. And this is an example of it. So I, I think it's a matter of showing them me doing the, the proper uh, answers to what they want. And and being diligent to see if we can get what we need. Um, and I also look at energy audits. Uh, they're recommending an energy uh, an energy audit, like like for example, Susie's. That was done more than five years ago. I didn't look it up. But I believe it was done more than five years ago. So I think it was done in twenty fifteen or sixteen, but I more than five years ago. Which means it would have to be redone. In order to qualify for their MC, right, and so they do with all municipal buildings. So this would be something that you know I'd be willing to work with you on. Okay. on it's their... a comprehensive thing, and it's going to go like this. Yes, I would hope that a decision to to do it and where would be a, a select board decision. With that, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. No, this isn't a. Oh, but I'm just going to follow with you for making sure okay. the, the no. T's are crossed and the I's are dotted mm -hmm. that. That will make a presentation. If you don't have time to to, to do the in depth that you want, you give me some direction. Okay. Well, I can we'll see. help out with phone calls and things of that sort. We'll see, but I'll give you an answer to what you just said when I get to the building commission report for what he and I've been discussing through the air handlers. Okay. We'll the, the, everything that I've received on it, I have sent to you mm -hmm. myself. There's one other document I believe that came in from somewhere which I hadn't seen before that I this afternoon put into the energy dry uh, directory on my my laptop and that condenses a lot and I'll send that to you tomorrow. Great. I got some reading to do. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. um, I also know to want to note that I was looking through the the final rule ARPA final rule uh, regarding uh, purchasing road equipment. And it seems to, again, still be within our, our prerogative to do so since it's not taxpayers' money. I did write to Katie Buckley, and um, uh, unfortunately, she has not responded back. I do have a copy of the email. I probably didn't CC you guys because I was doing a bunch of things, sometimes with my cell phone. So, um, But uh, it, it was sent out on, I have a copy of the email in there. My, she, uh, oh, Monday, I sent it on Monday. Okay. Last time I sent her something, approximately two weeks later, I get an email from her and she stated in her email, uh, I'm so busy. Which of the following dates would you like to talk? And there were like 10 days out. She had like four or five days oh, starting at 10 days wow. out. So she's very helpful, as you and I heard at the conference. And when we get a hold of her, she will talk. But uh, don't be surprised if you end up finding yourself feeling I need to give her another contact. Okay. She she you know came right out and told me she says I'm inundated. Right. And he, so she and she apologized and I said you know would, uh, I understand, but I'm only asking Martha, right? for thirty. No, no, we're talking about Katie. Talking about Katie oh, I'm sorry. 
Yes. Okay. She is the uh, yeah, Vermont well, League of Cities and Towns yes, Arbor yes. Resource Contact Person. She yes, also yes. came here with Chris Campany that one time. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. While we're on that topic, uh, I promised last meeting to contact the treasurer's office for the municipal equipment loan program and see if we could get pre-approved. I did contact them and we cannot get pre-approved. You actually have to find a piece of equipment, fill out the application and wait for them to approve it. And of course it's April 1st and October 1st. Exactly. If for some reason the, the vendor decides they don't wanna wait that long, they'll keep that, that app active and we can go and look for another piece of equipment somewhere else. So that's the closest thing they get to pre-approval. They will they they do it predicated on the equipment, not the 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 lendability or yeah. borrowing ability of the okay. municipality. So they do it that way. And the cutoff is April one. Uh, well, you have they have to, to be there by April one. And I looked at it, and it's not too shabby, except for information that we more than likely would have to go to the the educational. Uh, education uh, group at the high school and the, and the, uh, the, the elementary school, New Fane, Brookline Elf, New Fane Elementary, and the high school to find out what our taxes are in amount oh, I see. to the town for those two to entities fill, to, to fill, fill out the application. Well, the application. Everything else should be internal to us. But the application has to be by April 1. Uh, it has to be there by oh, the, April 1, yeah, and, and, and April October allowed, 1, uh, April 1 this year. Just to make sure I understand, we're allowed the extension if the vendor says, go to hell, I sold it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> it's 75, 25, 2%. Right. 75, 25. Yeah. Yeah. And that has to be a minimum of $20,000 borrowed. And the equipment has to be, uh, the life expectancy of the equipment has to match the length of the loan. So that they oh. feel secured and covered the whole time. They won't, whether it's three year long or five year long. Yeah, they don't want a 1996 or 15 years. I got it. Yeah. I don't know. There's a bunch of other stuff yeah. uh, that yeah. I can email you if you'd like. But <laughs> but the answer is I said I'd look into the pre approval. Okay. Could it be nice to know we're nice. approved? Just get the equipment, say we're know. applying and it's approved. You know, so they'll wait. Mark. <laughs> rather than them feel like, well, I don't know how long that might be. You know, it would yes. put you at a little bit of a disadvantage. Okay. So, all right. So it's something to, to, to work on between now and if you well, like, well, but you got to get a piece of equipment to be on the application. Right, and in order to, we don't have to buy the equipment, but we can have a deposit on the thing. To no, why not? Uh, you, you're probably not going to get someone with a deposit to wait six months. You, you got to have you got to have equity. Uh, uh, we're talking only how long does it take them to approve the? Uh, oh, the, it can be can be a week oh, month. Jesus. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, okay. so okay. we have to find what we want. Find something, make an application. If it falls through, we'll still have the open, we'll the open, the open end. end. So I think that's what we're going to have okay. to do rather than leave until October. Well, probably everybody else does that too. They have to. Have to. They have to. Because it's a hot market, probably. So okay. Market answer, um, sure but again, that fits in with the final rule and what I heard from okay. the LCT in the past. I'm not looking for more work, but if I could ask, add one more thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, on the website, you, there are. Uh, the six month period is going back about six, seven years. If it would be uh, uh, putting our minds at ease, I, I, I would find it. So if I called one or two of the towns that they went to and asked, what did you experience from the day you got approval? How long to Whoa. close? You know, wow. how long do you have to wait? So that oh, so we have some kind of concept deal. that allows us to know whether we need to do something between now and April first, uh, or, good idea. or it, whether it's going to end up waiting two months anyway. That's a great idea. Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. I hope you enjoy the look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> you need me. It's also. Um, I was also reading through the uh, the the book on ARPA. Uh, requirements and the final rule and there's also um you know we talked about since we're not doing the salt and sand shed if we do need additional covered storage at the town yard and if the, if the and since we were qualified to get the salt and sand shed based upon the fact of the presence of water in the vicinity since protection of water sources is one of the major components of using ARPA funding that it's possible to use again from 
from what the book says, you can use funding from ARPA to also cover uh, this purchase to so build that build storage. Uh, again, more details have to be looked at, but that is based upon the fact that there is a water source nearby and it's mm -hmm. already been something. They'll just say that's okay, kind of. There's a book. Okay. And there's there's so, chapters in it, and that's one of the chapters that covers is if you're going to be able to protect the water source by using ARPA funds, there may be additional ARPA funds from another program that will dovetail in. So I'm saying that the opportunities, like you said, there is a spider web out there, and we're sort of just getting through it. Yep. It just involves started. a lot of a lot of uh, reading and such. Uh -huh. All right. So those are just items that I wanted to point up point out to you. And um, if we could get uh, the, all those numbers, uh, because we have to, after April 1st, we have to go into the portal and we have to, little well, ladybug, the all those things okay. are. Round circles. Yeah. Um, uh, at between April 1st and April 30th, we have to submit what, what ARPAs have been obligated so oh, far. So far. Correct, for, this, for this term. Okay. Okay. So that's why I was just starting to. Okay. So whatever we spent, you're saying. I want to. Tell I want to make sure we have a, a real clear yeah. indication. Okay. And you know, I was also thinking back when we were, you know, every time we had the meeting, I said, "Well, I remember the eight thousand dollars that Jimmy Rogers uh, yep. owed us and had put on to the do the oh, yeah. and You know, if we don't communicate clearly with the treasurers that these things happen during meetings, it doesn't get moved. So that's probably why it didn't get moved. And I have no problem because if we're going to use it anyway for, for putting in the floor in that building, that would still be a, a good source. But that's the thing, making sure that when we make these motions that the uh, treasurer knows what's going on so that those things will be moved appropriately. So that's why I want... Uh, 6B, 1 through 5, to be very clearly written out. So uh -huh. I can tell, the set, you know, make sure. And every meeting we submit a list of them, this is what we decided. This is what we have. Good yeah. idea, too. And boy, the, the good ideas are really coming. We were talking about it. Well, you're learning the jobs. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. okay. All right. So now we're going to just move on to um, reports. Um, Mr. Bills, what can you help us with? <laughs> Okay, well, <clears throat> I believe since our last meetings, I think we went through a phase of warm weather, and uh, so we went out and applied quite a bit of stone to the road and brought it back up to good and passable at the time. Um, and then it's turned back cold, and so the roads have burned. Hard. Yeah, they've grown back up good enough to plow. Them up. Well, they put their money. Oh, oh my God. When I had gone out, um, some of it was freezing to the point it turned out good, some was fair. And like up by Johnny Swings, um, I left bigger ruts than he left. But where in between my ruts made it smooth enough for him to try. Right. He, he did send me a message to say thank you. He saw you out there before he went to bed that night okay. um, up there. Um, I didn't okay. tell him. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. First and thoughts or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so um, as I was nearing the end of the evening, um, I keep getting the same issue. The, the batteries are going down. It's not charging. In which vehicle? The grader. The grader? Okay. Yeah. So I experimented. I replaced parts. Um, Archie uh, suggested I contact uh, a local mechanic that we've had before. So he came and looked, and he didn't think the alternator was working properly. Doesn't think it has enough output amperage to keep up when I'm running all the lights. There's like Just a dozen, a dozen mm -hmm. and then I run the heater sometimes. Did he, did he have a gauge and, and measure the what was the output of how many volts? Uh, it was putting out 28 point some 28.4 volts Ooh, uh, really? when it was charging. But then when everything was on, it just kept dropping down. He tested the batteries. Uh, it's a 24 volt charge system. 
Uh -huh. And in some things, they're reduced to 12 volts. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> did he check for shorts? I believe he did. I, I had him install a master switch. Yeah. Which uh, cuts the batteries instant. You can, if you have a, a short or uh, you can disconnect the batteries by a turn of a switch. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the reasons was uh, I've been charging the batteries with a battery charger when I'm not operating it. And some, there's somehow the battery goes flat setting. Hmm. So with this uh, master switch, I can charge them, turn them off. They'll hold the, the power. During the daylight hours when I'm running the equipment, I don't use much of any electricity other than to start it, just the strobe light. Mm -hmm. At nighttime, I have like eight big, have to, big sure. lights. Yeah. And as they go dim, you just it's hard to see the blade. It's hard to see. How old are the batteries? Those are only like, I believe, three years old oh, really? right now. You know, what, they, what are they? Are they rated for any length of service? They're uh, through John Deere, so um, if they're if they should go bad, I believe they're still under a, a warranty. Under a warranty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I did with my I had this old car. I went through this old spiel in, in the fall. The alternating battery, the alternating battery, right. the battery. Yeah. And the trick I found is you get your battery up to charge, then you disconnect the power off that battery. Yep. Go out with a multicaster the next day and see how much it's dropped. In fact, I'm doing it now because I, I thought I was doing it again to pad his car. I just bring yeah. my multicaster because yeah. it's 12 and a half volts in, in, in the car. Yeah. And then in three days, it's like 12.4. So it's fine at this point. Yeah. I don't think it'll last because I had to jumpstart the car. Mm -hmm. And I had left, let it sit for over a month, so I didn't like that. And there's only yeah. one little light on it, but it's probably just, and as soon as you took the cable through, it started on. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying to you, Mark, is if you disconnect the, the positive to it, yeah, go out there, check, charge it, yeah, get it up to what it's supposed to be, check with the multitester. Okay, you're 12 and a half volts or 28 or whatever it is. How many batteries? In? Two. And, Two and that's kind of, that's good. Okay, and then you disconnect the power. Yeah, the next day you go back out with a multitester. Yeah, see I, it reads. I kind of did that this morning um, with that new kill switch. It basically it takes one of the heavy battery oh, cables switch. to the ground to the switch, and then from the switch back to the ground oh, yes, the the same battery. Thing. So it it's the same opens thing. and closes that circuit. Not same so thing. when I first put my meter on there, it was uh, twenty four five. Okay, I started it. And took another reading and it was down 23, 9, 23, 8. And while you took that reading, while you took that reading, the alternator was running. Yes. So when you put your contacts, Whoa. your leads on, it was on the positive and negative terminals of the batteries. Right. It sure going like this. Sounds like your alternator's yeah. running. Well, the next step is the regulator. That's regulator yeah. Is yeah. Is mounted yeah. to the back of the alternator. Yeah. And I'm thinking that maybe that's uh, when you start it, like it opens and closes to regulate. Yeah. That. Yeah. When, when I started my car the other day, and immediately that needle went bingo because the alternator was doing its job. Yeah. Wham! Mm -hmm. Well past 24 volts yes. or 12 volts. <laughs> and then it gradually settles down to 12 volts. Mm -hmm. But when you turn it off, okay, you're up to charge. So by that not doing that, when you would, is what Stan's saying, as far as I could see, Salted or regulator that's mm -hmm. causing yeah. that issue because it should. Have you have a you have a company that's you have a mechanic that you work with. Yeah, you? he's one that works around this Wyndham County. Okay, uh, he said yeah. gone to school. Well, not having a wood grater at this time of year functioning one hundred percent is like not having a hay bale already yeah. in July. Yeah, yeah. It's um, good good analogy. So it's, it's important to yeah. get it fixed and, and up and yeah, running. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of. Did he mention oh, yeah. testing out your regulator? Yeah, he's coming back. Oh, he did. He didn't do it that day. Um, he did a bunch of things, and okay. he told me he would call me. He wants to come back. Wants me there. Okay. He mentioned also the fact that um, the old light bulbs uh, call for more amps than the new LED mm -hmm. type, and he's thinking he can replace 
some of these light bulbs with LEDs that draw hardly any amperage in okay. the brighter. Okay. So that um, that was another option that excavator. maybe okay. would call for less. Yeah. So, so he's going to uh, pursue some different things and come back and well, good luck on that. meet with me. So, yeah. I mean, as far as running it today. Well, we'll get into that road grader too, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 That's how I met the my old neighbor on Patty's Corner, which is a 1996. Yeah. Had never been yeah, it's amazing how oh, it's like, well, work and so like a bad everything in that close to every place show uh, all 10 years, 15 years, and some can't get the, the on a car three out of them. An alternator has to put out four on average 14.2 volts, uh, and it keeps the battery, the battery itself at about 12.4. 12. 12. Yeah, so there's not much difference, it's only about two volts different coming in. Right. With eight lights or whatever, I'm not sure what that alternator should be rated for. Is there a manual? That's uh, that? The one that's on it's like 22 amp. It is. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, oh, and you need 24 in batteries, right? You yeah. need 24. So you're at a disadvantage to start off with if that's the case. Yeah. Maybe you need a different, more powerful alternator. Well, that was what this mechanic said. Was yeah. He, he was already starting to look and he found one that was 40. Uh huh. Woo. 40. Wow, so he was gonna. It is. It might be hazardous. You know, being a twenty-four volt, there weren't a lot of different options. Yeah, if you basically had to go with what John's yeah, got. Yeah, right. yeah. But he's got two stands. Yeah, but he thinks the this uh, alternator has an internal regulator might be cheaper than mm -hmm. with John Deere. Yeah, great. So yeah, he, and correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there? Uh, there was. About five or six years ago, we also made a motion that for every hour the the grader was run, that would be money would be set aside for its repair. Yeah, that's so, yeah. yes. Something huh. I don't Jimmy Rogers. Jimmy Rogers. Not something I remember some things and I don't remember what they asked us for. I don't know. To put Ooh, elephant brain over here. The machine down the road, I guess. <laughs> yeah, something I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna ask the treasurer. Yeah. About the uh, greater, I mean, maybe Spain has a similar deal with their own because I know that most towns do have a an upgrade replacement plan, and, and that's going to, anything that we get that would be a part of the plan. Yeah, to always yeah. be able to slowly build up to for repairs and replacements. So, um, so you have some trading value. Okay, well, good luck with the equipment. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know that. I'm sorry. No, it's uh, I can run it either way. I I can charge it, and it'll stay up, you know, while I'm out on the road for eight hours. I I've done but it. But the nighttime before. with the lights. The nighttime is a tough one, and and being that mud season's coming in, I do a lot in the middle of the night. So it'll be a good thing to have it. You know what? It might be worth doing is when you have a day where you're booked late, lightly. Is just check all the connections on all of the draws. Yeah, you know all the lights because it's almost sounding like there may be a uh, a ground on something that's siphoning off power. Yeah, oh. I I unhooked today and put a test light uh, into the ports to, yeah. to see if with the key off if it was back feeding. Because sometimes inside the alternator there's diodes that yeah. allow electricity to flow one direction only. Mm -hmm. and, Sometimes one will burn out out of like wow. six. Yeah. And uh, even with it'll charge during the day, but when you, you're you shut down, it'll drain your battery slow. Yeah. And I thought it could be that feature too, but um, it, I'm pointing more towards the regulator or this no, is, regulators in, in the alternator or on the Well, some are internal and some are mounted on the back. Uh -huh. and, and right now, this machine is mounted on the back of the alternator. Oh, good. So, so it can be replaced. Rather than replacing the whole alternator. Right. right. So. Love to know how old that alternator is. Yeah. Uh, no way to tell that. No, I think I have a record of that. Do you? Yeah. Because that's before you, wouldn't it be? Uh, you no, know? I think we've, we've had really? to replace batteries and alternators. Okay. In the past. You've been on board 16 years or so. Yeah. So. 16 so you put heater cores in it shortly yeah. after I got it. Those were like 700 dollars on us. The uh, yeah, when I first 
started driving the grader, the, the heater cores, like little radiators under the seat, the, mm -hmm. the fan blows oh, the heat through, nice. and they were rotted from corrosion, sure. and that antifreeze smell was, you know, you oh, got the door shut, and you, it's all you could smell was hot, steamy antifreeze, and I uh, finally got the board to approve, but it was like $700 for the two wow. pieces, which are, you know, yeah, the heater cores. Big, but, but they've been that's well worth it, I think. Yeah. But he, that thing has a, you can make bread in there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's got a great team in the system. The town has another income source? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You thought about Bill's Mill, yeah. Bill's Mill, yeah. Bill's Bakery. He delivers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. All right. So, um, so, so to move on there, I guess. Uh, Roads have gone back to just winter maintenance. Uh, a couple of trees down in between meetings. Um, let me see. I I did get a email stand with a list of machines I kind of looked at, uh, and then I did a little bit more exploring on my own. I've got some information coming. Um, I was in hopes it would come today before. The meeting tonight but it sounds like within the next few days i'll have some information on some machines and prices and i've asked for their finance uh programs mm -hmm. and uh different uh questions on the yeah if we get something that looks attractive we can do the application this would be ideal and then if it doesn't pan out but if we some of these machines were too big your email was saying yeah. that would be too large for the road system that yeah um see new fame purchased a brand new caterpillar and i'm not sure which number they start at 312 and go to like 322 the model size mm -hmm. and after they got it nobody liked to run it it was always uh when you you had to be in the opposite lane to work on the ditch wow. Wow. The, beside the road <clears throat> it was just the size was big and the boom was always you had to be very careful you're not swinging into the wire you're watching your bucket but the booms were yeah. tall and so they it more or less i from what i understand it sat in the yard more than they used it wow. they had a mower for it and I, I believe this is the machine that you had to be sitting still and mow with the mulcher. You couldn't mow going down the road. It just wasn't designed wow. that way. Wow. And and I heard that just recently they, they traded it in and upgraded it uh, for something different. So, right. I, so I, I looked at the weight ratios on those numbers and they were started at like 33,000 pounds to 80,000 pounds and you know those size machines are great for a little bigger highways but I think for our size towns uh, a more of a medium duty machine oh. is ideal I, I I have rented through Brookline just like what Wardsboro had they had a 12,000 pound machine and it worked pretty good, but it was kind of tippy. Uh, you know, if you picked up a scoop of material out of the ditch and went to swing with it lifting, it would try to tip the machine. It wasn't, heavy it wasn't as stable as a mm -hmm. bigger machine. So there's kind of... That, that was 12,000 pounds? That was 12,000. And so what, what did you suggest that I, we should I'm thinking a medium? 20... 25,000 would be ideal. From what I've gathered through rentals through the town, um, loading in, in, in and out of a truck, um, that like the JCB size is seems ideal. to be ideal. It's, it's more stable. You can reach from one side of the road to the other, you know, if you're cleaning the ditch and there's a place that you can put it, you don't have to move each each bucket and um just a lot of great features the the vision was good um and i feel like the fact that 
we can mow and dig and this big uh, in that medium duty size machine. So I've I've done quite a bit of uh, online looking. Great. And uh, thank you. That's great. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at service and parts availability is a big thing. Mm -hmm. but, um, right, right. And so I also contacted Wardsboro has upgraded from the 12,000 pound machine to the 20,000 pound oh. machine. Stratton has done the same. They got rid of a, they traded a backhoe, John Deere backhoe, for a JCB like we had rented uh, from Alta. And so I, I contacted them and just to find out if they, they've owned it now about a year. And uh, I said, would you give it a thumbs up or thumbs down? And I'm, I'm just checking for reference. Uh, we're maybe looking and he says, oh, we love it. He said, definitely thumbs up. Um, like the one we ran? Yeah, he couldn't say enough about it. And um, they took was that G mode on their roadsides um, were weeping out into the highway and they've got them back, you know, 15 feet on each side of the road. 15 and feet? He sent pictures. He sent pictures of them mowing. Um, which which town was this? Town of Stratton. Stratton, yeah. Okay. And uh, the road uh, foreman up there is Chris Lillard. Was that the JV on one ten? To care to speak to him on it. Mark, was that like the one ten model? One ten model, yeah. The one that's what we got. Yeah, and so they're they're doing all their roadside mowing, all their ditch work, all their stone lining, uh -huh. and um, oh, and they also uh, purchased a buffalo leaf blower, and they had uh, a fabricator guy build a cradle. And they have a thing they can pick it up and drive down the road with it mm. and uh, sweep their ditches. Neat. Ooh, their ditches neat. So they've actually got another new side of it. To it. Yeah. Mm. And we need that person's name so we can do the same thing. Yeah, he said if, if down the road, if we needed any Sweet. information, he'd be glad to share. Wonderful. There we go. Yeah. Terrific. So, Wonderful. And I know that Wardsboro picked one up. They traded their small one for the bigger one. And I I know they have a new road foreman and I I didn't have his uh you didn't ask them what they paid for. Huh? I didn't because one both of them were trade-ins. And yeah, I don't know. Difference. I'm not sure if Stratton bought brand new or or second hand. Okay. I know Wards Bros was second hand. Hmm. So hmm. um so anyway, I've got information coming on uh, availabilities of whatever these companies have. I called a couple different companies right. and um, okay. keep us posted. So, uh, the availability, the financing, and all that stuff. And and also, I asked for a rental rate, monthly rental rate, to uh, you know if we're getting closer to mowing season and. I was thinking to maybe put a foot in the door with a one that had a mower to mm -hmm. start the mowing season. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a reminder if we go through financing through the dealer, we're going to have to go to the townspeople. That's have right. Way. But if you go to the state, you don't. Yeah, you have to call a special town meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I, I, so, so that's, you know, how are we proceed? Yeah, you gotta remember this. Right, you gotta keep that in the back of our mind. Yeah. I just wanted to gather information enough. No, I didn't, perfect. I didn't say and there's an interest rate or anything. I would want to. Just yeah. wanted to. Yeah. And there's an interest rate to save them to if we go over the state too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And again, anything else, Mark? Um. Our, I think since our last meeting, we had brought in. Uh, I think it was four more loads of sand. And uh, our salt still, we're down to like one dump truck load. And uh, I asked Archie if he thought I should reorder and he wanted to wait. Um, 
Maybe being, it's, being in March now, we might be able to get through with. Uh, and just use up what we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's there's it doesn't seem to be a shortage. Okay. And if I make, have a real strike. If I make a call, I'm certain we could get one within a day or two. Okay. So one other thing, distantly pertaining to what you're just talking about, yeah. you saw on the uh, accounts payable warrant a reference to transport of sand. Oh. Oh, and so okay. that really it sounds like was purchase of sand and uh, and then some stone. Some stone, yeah. So both got purchased. Yes. We didn't get charged nineteen hundred dollars just to truck it. Yes. Right. Um yes. We did? Yes. That, wow. That, that's why okay, we're gonna skip this a little bit because we were talking okay. about this, but yeah. um there was of, a, of which uh, two questions. Yeah. AS Clark and sons, and I was going to bring it up. Okay, hauling stone, two thousand eight hundred dollars. So sand delivery, one thousand one hundred thirty-four dollars. So you know what? I haven't looked into the accounts payable receipt. If it was hauling, my question originally also was. It says. Falling stones and it's under winter contract services. Is that incorrect? It should be summer. Um, yeah, uh, the person from the trans that was there before Megan and Mark, it, it, Archie explained it to me again. It was John Alexander, mm -hmm. and he said that stone is considered a summer material mm -hmm. because it's a it's uh, applied to the gravel road, and it, it, it'll always stay there. So right, that's so that should be summer, summer material, material, so that'll have to have that brought to the bookkeeper's attention. Well, I will bring it up again when we do our accounts pay. Right. And then um, road sand is considered a winter material. To, uh, yeah. Road sand, 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 salt, and salt, plowing, or winter, winter materials. And um, the bills that we're referring to is 42 yards of winter sand delivered at $27 a yard, which is the contracted price for $1,134. But this was 28 hours of service of four, using a 14 yards truck which hauled three quarter inch stone from Vernon to Brookline um, between the 9th and the 16th of February. And that is $100 wow. a haul. So it was $200 an hour. So that's what $2,800 in the hauling service fee. Wow. The, um, so would some of that go to summer and some go to winter or? Well, the quarry stone is its is its own bill, and that is three quarter inch quarry stone. One was uh, forty two cubic yards at nineteen fifty, and one was twenty eight cubic yards at nineteen fifty, and that um so that was a, the bill for the quart. The stone itself was one thousand three hundred sixty five. So yes, it cost more to have it delivered than it did to purchase it. Yeah, that uh, that was the. The thing. Going there's there's yeah, going to Vernon. Yeah, I mean, some of it is stockpiled for mud season. So, I, I, yeah, I uncovered and used what they freshly brought, and then I got into the stockpile, and then I had them put a couple extra loads for the stockpile. Sure, I, I'm not, but not as yeah, you buy it, and that's, but I'm not going to change it to summer material, right? For the quarry stone for the stone right and then that would also so that would the delivery of the stone would also be summer correct yes so sure. both of those will need to get changed yeah. and I'll, I'll mention that one before we vote right. to approve those accounts payable and if i don't yell at me it's right. remind me i mean i i think that the stone is working out great i think uh whitney hill probably would have started getting complaints if i hadn't uh, covered the ruts with stone and same Athens Road. Right. Yeah, there was a lot of areas that last year was tough. Yeah, anything in the sunlight just rutted uh, you know, and 
putting the stone over mm -hmm. it. And then the nights that it started to freeze, I, I graded it, blended it in with some of the dirt that was still soft and um, it allowed for the plowing to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it definitely is helping winters and it's gonna improve summers as well. Okay. And it's it's gonna always gonna be there. It's gonna be worth its while, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's an investment that uh, improves the roads. What is your comment about Mr. Swing making mention about shore pack versus brown um, dirt? So shore pack is uh, more or less ground up ledge. Right. They grind it down to a certain size stone. You, you, can get, you can get any size shore pack I have my right up to like three inch or five inch. And what it, the gravel that's in it is just the refined dust that mm -hmm. crumbles the, the real finds out of the crushing of the stone. So it's really fine. You you apply it. The first time it gets wet, it's it's almost like muck. It's very slippery. It's it's like concrete uh, almost. Slip. Yeah, it's like slippery. a slip. It's like, it's like a lie in it. Once it the water dissipates out of it and it tightens together, it does get a lot like cement. Once it dries, it, it holds its shape. But still, throughout the season, you're going to get moisture into it, and it's going to expand, and it's still going to, you know, stay good until you get an instant thaw, and you're still going to get that mucky until it settles back down and tightens in. So, as far as color goes, a lighter color doesn't. Um, uh, as quick as dark, uh, dark color. It's just... the sun hitting on that darkness that like a piece of brown bark on ice by the end of the day that brown bark will thaw down through its ice and um, something it's like in the summertime you wear something light mm -hmm. it's cooler and dark and hotter but but you're always going to have moisture content in your soil, regardless of what it is. And it's always going to freeze and thaw, and you're always going to get softness. We just had some questions from Mr. Swing when the, his road was collapsing under those very warm days mm -hmm. and um, about the materials that were could be improved the road. And we talked about it, and, and that was one of the things I just wanted yeah. to get that out that it was a concern. But I think. So as far as for an, improvement, for an improvement, we could do the same. We can truck some stone up and put them in the worst areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also need to remember that this road was completely washed out back in the storm, a, a oh, July yeah. storm. And anytime you rebuild a new road, it, it takes sense. a long time for it to, to, to tighten in. And so it hasn't really had the opportunity to tighten in. But when you take a, a temperature of 50 degrees away from frozen ground, you're going to, regardless of what your road's made of, unless it's paved or if it's full of crushed stone, you're going to have... Oh, thank you. That's that, it, very you, interesting. I find that... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just you're going to have a mud season. That's what it is. Stone helps. You know, if you could yeah. stone your entire oh, area, stone doesn't melt. That's right. The dirt under it might heave sure. and cross a little bit, but um sure pack's pretty good as well. Yeah. Oh, that's it's like bad. you know, come fall time, uh they don't want you to put any culverts in late in the season because of you know, you've loosened all that gravel up. You got this nice hard pack. Then all of a sudden there's a culvert and uh, there's air and, you know, it hasn't settled in and tightened in, but you're going to get a, a bump. Okay. And so um, all those factors. Well, you sound good. like you know what you're talking about, so that's good. I'm sure. Well, it's, it's, you know, it takes time, like yeah. everything. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's but it, you were very helpful when trying to communicate with the residents when there were some concerns. So yeah, I, yeah, I mean we'll work to do whatever it takes to get them in and out. And um I know it's hard to cover the whole town at once, but uh 
but that yeah, it's you, the best you can hope for is a gradual thaw, a little during the day, and it might freeze a tiny bit at night and thaw a little more in the day. You don't notice it as much, but when you get an extreme sudden 40, 50 degrees, yeah, yeah. 40 to 50, 60. Yeah. I can remember that one year, several years back, it was 70 degrees um, wow. from freezing, and, and the roads, the ruts were. I was, I thought, sure, I'd get the greater stuff. I was afraid to take it out. And I ended up scraping all the loose mud off one day to get down to ice to get people through. And fall. then the next day it would thaw down more and I'd scrape more mud. I had, I had mud God. four feet deep, one lane of hard pack, all the mud here. And once it started drying, and people were going back and forth. Then I could slowly pull the dirt back over and level the road up. Mm. But that took months to get it back into mm. shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, we yeah. kept it passable, but yeah, we, a lot of on, a, on, a, on a hard winter, and your your frost will expand, and then driving on it compresses it, makes it more dense, more more ice. And the more you travel it, the deeper it'll go. Sometimes you'll have two to three feet of ice wow. under a road. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like the Athens Road. It'll thaw out the very beginning, the sun hits it. And over the month or two, the last of it thaws out at the far end way later than huh. the rest of the town. And same up on Whitney Hill. Anything in the shade is uh, takes Later. longer. Okay. So, for purposes of the minutes, what was the final thing that you did with Johnny Swing's issue? I I went up as it was freezing <clears throat> and and rescraped it, filled in the ruts, and let it freeze back to. Uh, you know, it was drying out, but it it uh, just thawed way too quick. So we we put it back flat and. Um, and it's been freezing since. So right now, we we can apply stone to it. You know, probably come mud season, you'll have more issues, and we'll put more stone. We'll hear from us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Mark? Uh, I, I guess I'll stop there. I've taken up enough of your time. Absolutely correct. Close. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, Stan. Uh, Highway permits. Yes. yes. Uh, after our last meeting, uh, I I sent an email to Mark Pickering about the uh, fact that there was no road work scheduled or anticipated that would interfere with their center line painting. Uh, I sent a copy of the town report to the Vermont Archives Division oh, and got right. acknowledgement that that's been done. Right, David did too. Okay. Uh, oh, we did. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I sent Jeff Nugent a copy of our culvert policy based on the fact that there was an exchange between you and he. Yeah. He acknowledged that. As a matter of fact, today I got a response back. Thank you. And he said he'd like to meet with the highway people in the next uh, several weeks. Uh, I printed out, filled in, and need signature on. The certification of our roads being in compliance with uh, state standards. It just needs our signatures. It's got today's date on it. Uh, we haven't sent that in yet, I don't believe. I didn't have it available last meeting. Uh, it's, it's something they want sooner rather than later. Perfect. Okay. Certificate of compliance. Okay. Thank you for setting this one up. Mm -hmm. Then while I'm signing this, I also printed out the contact sheet that Megan Bronk requested. I put in the appropriate names. I didn't, I don't remember everyone's cell phone number. Uh, so if you could take a gander at it, I, I, you've given me your cell phone number somewhere. Uh, you've got two places to put that in. Marcus, if you've got a phone number at the garage, you're going to need to put that in. 
and I don't know if Archie has a cell phone number, but if yeah, yeah. if you do, then if, if you know it, would you be able to put it in the blank spot here on the form so sure. I can yeah. send that in tomorrow? So this is town manager, not town clerk, um, Archie. So the driveway culvert, uh, we, would, we would add the driveway culverts onto our culvert map in the future. I have no idea. That's is that what it is? Okay. With it All right. So that we can keep track. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. We, I didn't bother to bring it since that didn't come up between he and I. Yeah. And you said you were going to look into it. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't bring it up. I figured whatever he told you is yeah. what we're going to do. Whether it was a free service or whether it was part of a pay service. That's right. Uh, you, you don't have a. You don't have a pony or garage, but you have it at your house. So I'll just yeah. Um, If you know where she's at, would be good to. Okay. Oh. I think that's if you guys uh, cell phone was 380-6013, I think it is. Not 380 oh, 6 I don't know Does if I have. sound right? <laughs> cell phone number form? I turned my phone off, so I don't know. Okay, let me just check real quick. I think I put it in here. Okay. I got three six five forty thirteen. Three six is home that, number. That sound right? Yeah, it's his home number three six five forty thirteen. Who's home number? Guy. Oh, I don't know. You've got guys on there. I didn't know if you wanted his home phone number. If it's if it's required there, please. He has a cell phone too, but I don't know about that. Uh, good enough. That would be a three eight on a eight yeah. eight phone number. Okay, thank you. So I will I will uh, scan this in and send it to Megan tomorrow. She emailed Megan emailed me and said that she uh, acknowledged uh, my inquiry as to what uh, we needed to do to make sure we didn't have any outstanding grants and also a timeline for the TA sixty form. Uh, she she emailed me back. She gave me a number of dates. Uh, they're all this month. Uh, March, March 13th, March 15th, March 17th, and the like. What I'll do tomorrow morning, if not before I go to bed tonight, email you that email from her. You did? I did. Okay. Yes. And if you could, if does anyone have a preference for a date on that? I wouldn't do it real close to the town meeting. I mean, I, mean, I agree. Yeah, because we'll probably still, I'm going to still be working on uh, getting the agenda for the reorganization right. for the 15th. So um, I guess. After the 15th, which she's got dates of the 17th, 20th, that, that was yeah. 17th. It's Any Friday of those is good Monday. with me. I don't know about what your schedule Yeah, be. I'm flexible. I'll go with whatever it matches. Yeah. Weather permitting and not meeting out there on the right. roads. Yeah, um, I mean, it shouldn't take more than an hour or two. Definitely. I wouldn't imagine. So. Actually, I... After looking at that, went back and looked at the one she filled in last year. Okay. And I'm piecing together from our fiscal year 24 budget the numbers that need to be put in for the one that we're going to do with her. So that we can so that here. so it, it 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 if we don't have it done by the time she gets here, it won't take, take very long, long once she's here. Sure. Okay. So yeah. uh, trying to understand how that's filled in uh, to just save time and work in the future. Yes. So. So anyway, uh, anything the seventeenth that she has the dates the seventeenth, twenty twenty one, twenty two, twenty four. Those are all fine. Okay, 
far as I know. Well, the 17th is a Friday. Is there a day of the week that's better for anybody? I'm flexible. Friday's good. Well, well, after. You want to do the 17th or the, tw or the 23rd or fourth one? A possible date on that list? Let's, let's, I'd rather get it over with. Okay. The 17th. 17th. I'll suggest that then. All right. And if not, backup would be the, the 20th, Monday. Okay. Any time of the day, uh, morning versus afternoon? I guess mornings are better. I think last time we did it, it was like 10 30 or 11. Yeah, I, that's good. Morning. I'm awake and have my coffee. Okay, whatever she responds with, I will send along to. You don't, you don't want to be a part of that, right? I don't know when I can be here because I've got doctor's appointments also. Okay. March. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll just send along whatever I, she I says. At home, but I'm not sure. Okay. I know the 8th, I got to be. I think those are the 8th. And then I think <laughs> the 17th is the next one. So I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So let others know. Uh, I then did an email to her indicating that one of the emails from Mark Pickering mentioned road structures grant and a highway class two grant and asked her for information if she could elaborate on just what those were. I actually went into both the A&R and the AOT websites to try to find a uh, uh, in their website, a location to find if we have any grants that are currently outstanding and pending and or what grants we can apply for. And I, I couldn't make heads or tails out of it. So and I'd like to get her advice and or yeah. Mark's and uh, Mark Pickering. Mm -hmm. And and uh, if Jeff, if, if those questions get answered before Jeff gets here, uh, what we need to do on the grants and aid that's been approved for the $12,000. We need to decide where we want to use that money. Uh, we can simply, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know, you are you can probably be a real guide here, Mark, uh, by indicating whether in the past you've used the REI report to focus on those that have more serious gradings than those that have lesser gradings yeah. as a focus point and then, and then yeah. you know, uh, choose. Because I'd hate to wait for the last minute. I think it expires on the that they technically should be done by the 30th of September. So by the time you look at, okay, you're gonna decide what you're gonna do, decide what the criteria are, create your RFP, advertise, get some responses, go through the select board meeting. It, the, the sooner we start, the better off we're gonna be. Yeah. And the more time the contractor or vendor is gonna to have to get the job done, mm -hmm. hopefully correctly. And, mm -hmm. and that's how much money was that? That's about $12,000. Yeah, we've got a, Basically a twenty five hundred dollar match, so the job can be up to like fourteen five or fourteen fifteen thousand, okay. yeah. something like that. And this is uh, this is a structures grant. Uh, no, that's oh. a GIA grant. Okay. One that we already have is a okay. GIA grant. GIA. Yeah. Grant and aid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So I think with that, the only question that you might have that I probably need to answer is as arose earlier this week, I did confirm and sent you the spreadsheet mm -hmm. of the fact, and I don't, they must have figured this out themselves way back last fall. They told us that we owed them $10,306.13. And that's what has been reimbursed to us in the expenses that we paid. Okay. And because, uh, we, we have already paid our match. We don't get, obviously, we don't have to, we've already paid it to somebody. And all the other amounts of the grant that we haven't spent, of course, that's going to go back to them. So all they're really looking for is money that they gave the town, that they reimbursed us for, uh, because we've already paid in the match amount. So that's just what they reimbursed it that they want. And, and it is accurate, I'm going to assume, that the $950.49 was returned to the town as a reimbursement for the last four months that we bill them for. So that's the number. If we get asked at a town meeting as to what the, the payout is for getting or backing out of the salt, sand and salt shed, that's what we owe. That's it? That's it, except for the $26,000 that may or may not be billed for us for all this background work that we never saw. 
or attack on work that we never saw. Yeah, nor were we ever told about it, as far as I can see, in any of the agreements. Uh, they haven't told us that. Okay. 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 Interesting. Thank you. Now, Don, we don't even know Don, what's been done. Uh, well, I, how do we know? You know, we're, yeah. we got to depend on somebody. Yeah, right. uh, I understand, as I mentioned in one of my last two meetings, when I was participating in the VLCT seminar, they, the state, are required to pay a match for every grant they get from the federal government. That 26 may or may not be their match. I don't know. Chris said when we were on uh, Chris Hunt, and Dot and I were interfacing with him on a Zoom meeting with, with uh, um, Margo Gia, said that it was for, for expenses for the various departments that went and reviewed the permitting process, the progress, uh, and the site, and, and the diagrams, and that, even though it was done by an engineer. They, get, they had to review it, apparently. I have no idea how that, what their pay rate is. I have no idea. But, but when you're looking at the party that gave you the grant in the first place and assisted you in getting it, I didn't think that, you know, I mean, we could, if the board wants to, say, prove it. Prove what the 26 came from. If you want to oh, do, yeah. go that route, we, we can do that. I'm a, now, but but what I, I, I thank you again for doing all this. And I think we were yeah, communicating email sure. and I was like, well, I think uh, Miss, I didn't want you to think that I was challenging anything that you were saying. They have not invoiced us yet for that amount. So the ball is in their court at this time. We yeah. have a we yes, okay. That's I went I'm back and looked at some email exchanges. I put all those in a particular directory in my computer, and one of the one of the parting comments that Margo made to us is to to the town was it was focused on me because I was the one that said I thought the town ought to check what is owed to make sure that we all make mistakes that what they say we owed is what we owe them and she said we'll sit tight until you finish your review so it was with that knowledge that I figured I had to go through but I would rather not have had to do any of it. But the fact is, we we should question them. I, I did question it, and I did determine that they're accurate. So I suspect that that will open the door for them, at least as far as Wyndham Region was concerned, mm -hmm. to proceed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Chris Hunt is approaching this. I understand that he's waiting for info or an okay from the director of ALT on this. I and mean, that's the guy that's going to decide if it's okay. when, when it terminated. Who pays what? Well, we already know we're into it for 10, 306, 13. We don't know anything about the rest. Is, uh, is any of that number part of the engineer? Uh, Bell, Ron, Ron Bell. Uh, engineer blueprints that were reduced and then the. We, it's a mix, Mark. It's a good question to get a good understanding of it. You're, you're going down a good path there. Uh, way back in 2020, Ron Bell uh, assessed the town $7,910 for his initial work on the uh, design and the particulars of the lot, slope, et cetera, et cetera. Agreed, yeah. Yeah, along with that was required a $277.50 uh, review by the lawyer to make sure that if there were any rights of way required as a part of this project, so we don't interfere with easements, et cetera, on the road. We got we built we got billed for that, and the town paid that. So we we build the we got billed for the two seventy seven fifty. We got billed for the seventy nine hundred. Uh, and in the back at, in that time frame, um, whoever was representing Wyndham Regional with us, I don't think it was Margo at the time. They billed, and we had to sign off on it. The state of Vermont. Through this grant, this $297,600 grant, to be reimbursed for 80% of the $7910 and 80% of the $2750. Uh -huh. There were a number of quarterly charges by Wyndham Regional that tallied up, I think, the, in, my, in that spreadsheet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. roughly $7,900. We got reimbursed for a large majority of those at the 8020 split because uh, when we paid the whole thing, that match we got to pay, we only get reimbursed to the 80%. But when you look at the chart, the last three or four disbursements, we did not seek a reimbursement on them. So 
Those we not we didn't get a reimbursement, we didn't ask for one. The others we did ask for on most of the other costs. We're not asking for a reimbursement. We just paid it within the last 60 days. The $1,890 that Ron Bell asked because he finished billing us for work that was done, but not paid for by the town because mm -hmm. he simply wouldn't answer the inquiry from either the town or Wyndham Regional as to what we owe him. That's when I called the police and said, is he dead? <laughs> they went over and knocked on his door and he called immediately. <laughs> I didn't quite say it that way. But in any event, that kind of is the breakdown. It is the spreadsheet. I'm going to have that spreadsheet at the mm -hmm. town meeting in a ring binder, much like what you've got, Doc. And, and, and the various categories that I feel we may be asked questions, I hope to have those numbers. So if you tackle it or whoever, or you want to look to oh, no, I, I got whoever you. and say, this, could you offer comment on that? I'll be available from, I won't be dependent on my memory completely. I'll be judging from memory and what's written in front of me. Right. All right, perfect. So I think the other thing I'm saying is that hopefully nobody, uh, we, there'll be plenty of documentation and evidence. And the other thing I want to add is, and you, I mentioned this um, one meeting ago or two meetings ago, when I asked for whether the town had actually justified by making calculations as to whether a piece of equipment would save us money, there is no such yeah, you had mentioned okay. that there was not. So I will on. be doing one between now and Monday evening that you will get a copy of that, that will indicate what savings it will be. Can occur. That can be even brought up at the very end, the non binding part that this is what we're doing with the ARPA funds and so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, speaking of town meeting, I meant to bring this up earlier. Let me just ask Is there a minimum number of population resident populations that are in attendance that we need like a percentage in order like suppose know. we don't have a good weather well, and five people show up i don't does think, that make a difference i have not heard anything okay no. all right i just thought of that i mean too. i've looked at the statutes in the past I attended a, a town meeting seminar less than 45 days ago. Right. You did just I the other yes, day. I mean, I was, you know, the role of the moderator, I wanted to find out what... The yeah, thing. if we felt that that was enough of an incentive to postpone it to the next day, you know, you reserved it for the next day. So Correct. if there's any fear that it would be insufficient, just in terms of the plain fact that there weren't enough people there to explain things to, we may want to, re, you know, put it off the next the thing anyway. Can ask the audience if their pleasure would be to uh, to to suspend to a time and place 24, 24 hours in advance uh, if there is only a few attending the meeting. Mm -hmm. That was just a question. That okay. All right. Good enough. Good enough. I'm sorry, it's your sign. No. Uh, and with that, there's no question about the, the, the spreadsheet uh, or no, whatever. Good. Then I think we're golden. And uh, whoever's next. Okay. All right, building commissioner. I only have one thing. And before last meeting, actually before last meeting, um, it was actually the day that Wayne Wynan had his birthday, birthday party. party. Mark and I commiserated for a little bit. And this is all Mark's fault. <laughs> uh, on you. <laughs> he came up with a brainstorm that must have been sitting in front of my face for the last five years and I never saw it because my brain wasn't working or whatever saying that those air handles the one in the basement at Susie's and the one upstairs Bill's came up with the idea why are we even running those things we could just put fil filtration systems in the room I said okay then Mark said he knew somebody that was familiar with Newbrook. And that's what they run. So I got on the phone the first part of the following week and called Pat Mace. And that's what they run. They run air filtration system, gal filters in each room, change of filters every once in a while. Portable ones or is it in the central system? Portable. Portable. Okay. Uh, and they don't have anything like what we have uh -huh. because that was a school. And I believe that 
is somewhat the case of all one of Susie's other other daycares. Oh, really? I don't think she has anything like that. So it was Mark was saying, nah, nah, you know, what are we doing here? I mean, he's right. So the obvious result is if there was a way we could shut off that system or we repipe that system and drain it, we don't have to have those two things running for about a grand, I'm guessing, maybe a grand and a half. I don't know. We could have filtration systems in those rooms and satisfy the needs of, of, of the air filtration. And because we have heat pumps now, again, Mark brought this to mind, we get fresh air coming in that has a 90, 90 some up percent HEPA filter. So oh. it's filtered before it comes in, then it's filtered in the room. So the need for the, my estimation, I'm looking into it. This, here we go. Oh, I'm going to show you a picture of it. Okay. Well, and, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you something yeah, yeah, very simple. I just saw one over the weekend like that. Yeah, there's hundreds of brands, and they have a looks like a truck air filter, and you tip okay. them over, and the cover pops off on the bottom, and the filter's this long, and it filters ninety nine point nine seven wow. percent of all uh, particles okay. out of the air, and um, and not only would that cover the central air, but these new heat pumps also filter the air yeah, that's it's going through them. And there's two filters on each heat pump and we have filters. So, In fact, Mark, I went out. So if you don't have to use those air handlers, it puts less of a strain on the boiler system because the boiler runs the air. Well, I don't want strain, but it cuts down energy. Okay. I don't you all remember back in in, in early. That's with the filter out. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hmm. The doctor. Me. I have something in my house already. Yeah, I don't remember way back in early fall, one. In yeah. late summer, early yeah, fall. All different sizes, depending on the square footage of the room. Mm -hmm. So, late summer, early fall -ish. I was doing an energy analysis of that building. It was about the time that we were, get, we, we were doing the heat pumps. Maybe it might have been a little earlier than that. Cuts okay. a chase, Bruce. And at that point in time, I had gotten energy, energy cons consumption before the heat pumps from, I guess, Olivia. I've forgotten who I got it from, from, from Susie's. And I noticed that, I believe, I have it at home, I believe it was 56% of the consumption of electrical energy was coming overnight. By the, I think it was five to eight, four to eight. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I went, huh. Air handles without a free oh, that. electric. That's what it's and, like. And at that, at that time, um, I believe they were running way more. Hiram mm -hmm. and I since cut it back to four hours a day, five days a week. They still have a pretty monster electric bill, as the last one was because of the heat pumps down, which is replacing the gas. And we all know that. So I called Pat and gotten his take on the whole thing, and you heard that. And then I emailed Hiram and I wanted to know what he was, was doing about the pneumonia hole. And, and then I also, in the same email, asked him, I don't know if any CC you guys are not on that. And I asked him, what's the feasibility? Oh, because I called Scott Bogat first. And Scott wasn't familiar with whether the air handlers were hooked up to the HVAC system. Mm. So he got to go to a plumber and he recommended Jefferson's. But anyway, so I said, well, of contact Hiram. And I told Hiram the same emails and no modules is there a way for disconnecting it up, disconnecting it, you know, repiping it with a drainage. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. do it, put a pipe in between the in and out, put a, a, a drain in it and shut it off. Didn't hear back from him. And about a week ago, I was coming home and Coda and Coda was at Cynthia's house. And it looked like him walking in the building. So Bruce. Sneaky Bruce. So I went in there and we talked about it for about five minutes. And basically what he said, he wants an engineer to look at it. It's a feasible. He also brought up the fact that we never got a quote on the gas boilers last year. And he wants and then recommendation of filtration in there and all that. And I said, well, I'll let him spin his wheels, but he's not answering the question. And the question is whether I can disconnect that system and not have to worry about it. Sounds like he doesn't know 
whoever whoever's going to take responsibility for doing it, I would think would want to run this by the party who inspects the school annually, at least I think annually, to find out from them if whatever is going to be utilized as an alternative is approved by them, accepted by them. Otherwise, yeah, it'll be, I don't hate to go out and spend the money and have them and come in and say, oh, that doesn't meet our specs. Uh -huh. It's best to ask the question first. Well, if you don't buy it, you don't buy it. You buy it, you buy it, and you know it's Okay, that's where the engineer comes in, I guess, if he's going to have to take a look at it, I guess. Well, uh, it, that, yeah. don't assume the engineer knows the statute. The engineer okay. knows the volume, okay. the amount of air you need to clean this thing out. Right. That's totally different than the question well, of is it legal and approvable. But nobody inspected, as far as I know. Well, the people who inspect the playground who told us we didn't have enough wood chips, the people that asked for more asphalt to put me down, the whatever it was that had to be done okay. in the last six months. There are these That's little it. things that need to be looked at. I understand. Yeah. So what I need to do is I need to ask, I need to ask Steph and Olivia if these inspectors or inspect when they inspect. The building, do they inspect, inspect the heating system? I need to know that. Yeah. If they say, no, they just come in and fish check you because of the tiles or, and they don't inspect it, then we check this, any statute that we think that might, might be in play here, but that would be related to daycares, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There are, there are, that's, why that, that's partly why this air exchange system is for fresh air and warm fresh air, that, that, that that's, that's required. Yeah, okay, so, that was set up for a school that's there now. Uh, and that's why I was pertaining to asking Olivia. And I haven't gotten a firm, firm answer, but the way I understand it is they haven't been doing it in, other, in, in their other, I'm not sure, yeah. in their other daycares. Because the other daycares are houses. They're not school buildings. They uh, are ranches. That, right? that may be, but to me, uh, there uh, there are, I know there there is a, there is a, uh, on the internet, not for the state website, there are requirements for daycare centers, yeah, whether yes. or not I they see. get to the extent of this building that was a school, but isn't now still requires that is a, is a question that we even ought to entertain because if it doesn't, then we're in the clear. Right. But if, if it does require something, then the question it. becomes what is requirable if we can shut this furnace down. With not furnace. Yeah. Well, but there's heat that goes through that too, right? No. No, the, no, the air is heated from the outside that goes through it. So so there's no no longer any hot water pipes that no, go through up in I the just, attic. I just, no, I didn't say that. Uh, you said air. The air is heated in a number of different ways depending on the situation. Uh -huh. It depends on the temperature of the air. Then the right. then then okay. then the Hot water will either do it, or the or the or there's 24 volt uh, heater that will, 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 will warm the air as well. So there's an electric unit and then yes. there's the hot water. Yes. And the and that's yeah, yeah. just controlling the temperature. That's and the correct. temperature can be disconnected, separate from the air being brought into the building through the air handler. I suppose when, when I was in the attic there and I saw them, you were really good. The copper pipes going into this, you know, to units, yeah, to this table, yeah. yes. And I'm thinking, you've been up there, the propane yeah. furnace is somehow heating this air up, yes, to be blown into each room, correct? That's a lot of propane to, yes, send fresh air. And then I got thinking, I changed the air filters in each room coming through this ductwork. And a lot of times it's it's disgusting to see wow. what's in these ductworks. Yeah. And these little kids are in there breathe throughout the, the whole year, the condensation that must build from cold to warm. And then you've got mold mildew, you've got all this fuzz lint stuff that each time I take fill once a month, the filter needs changing. Yeah. And I'm thinking of how easy these purifiers are that stand you know this high and and I had the opportunity to go into Newbrook and I went into five different school classrooms mm -hmm. and I'm looking in the ceiling and in the walls for ventilation nothing, nothing. and I found uh, one of those in each room 
Mm. And so I look it up wow. and see how pure that it cleaned the air. Mm. And knowing that with that, one of those units, you, you can buy them depending on how many square feet of mm -hmm. classroom. I did discuss that with Pat, the size. Mm. And, no, yeah. if, if there's a way we could eliminate that upstairs. Uh, Both of them. That's good. And, and then we could close the ductworks with some cardboard insulation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that the air like maybe be. one day somebody could clean it and use it if that's mm -hmm. if it's a necessary thing. But it sounds like that little unit could qualify mm -hmm. as uh, okay. air. So we thought was kind of well, what you talking about. Yeah. It's basically yeah. shut up the air that comes in, repipe it, drain the water as long as you're not interfering with your furnace system, the HVAC system, disconnecting both of them, doing everything that Mark said. And we're satisfying needs for cleanliness in the entire building. Well, you need the rules. So, I'm rules. Just, you, you know, if you have the opportunity to do some research, this came in the mail yesterday and it's grants for buying purifiers. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Thank you. This came in, it's grant funded air purification. Yes, sweet. Do you have a copy? I got it in my email. I just printed it out. Thank you. I don't think those heat pumps make it so warm in there compared to before. I, I, did you look back on the multi purpose one? How that made out? We... They went there after I did and turned it out. I'm not sure if they adjusted. I went back, uh, what night was it? I went at night and I changed the water filters. They uh -huh. didn't need changing. And uh -huh. um, the water filters, so I went did. Around. Yeah, they did. They, they both needed it. Yeah, it was time. They okay, they that was four or five months anyway. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I I I changed them all just a little bit so they all matched. Uh huh. Um, but it must be a huge savings with propane. It, it just has to be. Has to be. Yeah. I, she did give me numbers and hasn't complete numbers yet. Uh -huh. But um. It appears as though they're saving. They're what they whined about the fourteen hundred dollar bill for one month for electric, but they're but they're not, they they went through piles. But of they didn't have a three thousand or four thousand. Oh, propane they went over twenty thousand yeah. dollars in propane. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. This is vicious. Yeah, this is gonna. And we talked down the road of maybe changing out the hot water. Too. Yeah, we're gonna we can talk about that down the road. But we've been talk. We mentioned that oh, and and uh, the air. Um, air hybrid, hybrid hot water. Well, they're like thirty three hundred bucks to install according to Scott Boga. Uh, Mr. Bills is coming up with the idea of an instant hot water here to be pursued. As far as if that's a pursuit, if that's a just a that nobody water. showers, nobody they, yeah. they don't do much dishes. They they uh, no need for a, a large hot water heating system. They're yeah. less so, than fifteen hundred dollars over. I was at, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no showers, so that's true. No, no. and they no don't do too much cooking. No, it's just snacks and cold sandwich and run a dish dishwasher. A dishwasher. Dishwasher is what five gallons. So I was no thinking maybe a, a, a solar nine five gallons. Gallons of solar hot water or an on demand. Yeah. So before yeah. we go jumping on a hybrid, we, you know, I'm always always thinking down the road to what happens if we have it as a town office or something or something. But that's really not a, a huge concern. Uh, the immediate need is much more important in this case uh, because even if it was done that way, how much you can use if it was a town office? You're that's not right. taking a shower yeah. in there. No, yeah. yeah. and it won't be using the dishwasher either. So you're keeping uh, eighty gallons of all the time. All the time. And it is 80 gallons. I guess it doesn't have to work. It's not overdoing it, but still, it's going to rust out eventually. Mm. But just a thought. Okay, so I'll yeah, we'll thank you guys for sharing the legalities of the uh, air handles. See where that goes. All right. Obviously, there's no rush now because spring is just about here, hopefully, or he's gone. So that's not a big deal. Obviously, I told Mark to stop as far as rebuilding that room upstairs because there's really no need. To waste if any we, more cash if on you can eliminate it, yeah. If we eliminate it. it, so we'll just mm -hmm. uh, yeah. my thought just to stop it there is to repipe it so you can drain it, mm -hmm. keep the water circulating to, to back to where it goes, part of the system, 
and let the HVAC system do its thing. But Byron says he wants to have this engineer look at the system, okay? And in the meantime, we can consider the illegality of it. Is there a charge for that? He didn't mention it. Doesn't but there's always a charge. Ask, ask. <laughs> There's always a charge. And you, you'd use the opportunity to let him know that you had been loyal to him and asked him repeatedly about answering your question. You didn't, so you decided to do something else, which puts him on notice. Next time, answer me. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> yeah, because he didn't respond to you about the heat pumps and stuff, you, we, we ordered it through a different vendor. Oh, not heat pumps, the not gas boilers. Gas, gas boilers. Boiler. So, so we went we went and did something else. So now he knows that if you don't answer Bruce now, Bruce now is going to move beyond you. Oh, without a doubt. The same. That's what Stan would say. Okay. With a smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope well, he a... can't do anything else but smile. You know, it was so stupid of him because they're going to lose a good customer with a good paying, a good paying customer. What a stupid thing. They spent over an hour the, the, the uh, and the guy from Coda and Coda last spring, 10 months ago, and he says, I'll get back to you in two months, two weeks, because if I don't do it, I'll forget and ever do it to all this bottom of this working at the cold. Whatever. Yeah. There's okay. no reason to get into all that. All right. Um, but I got what you're saying and we'll consider it and I'm done. All right. Um Guy Tanz had signed on briefly, but he signed off again. I don't so I guess there's no town clerk report. Um, select board chair report. Just well, sort of some of that. My select board chair report involves um, uh, 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 okay, letting you know about the 172. I wanted uh -huh. you to know about the grants uh -huh. for the air purifiers. Um, I have time in the morning when I get up every morning. This is what I'm going to before Patty's up. So, this is when I delve into this stuff, okay. and this is when I can start making notes as to what I want to do. I also got some information on the DV Fiber, just an update that they have connected, started to connect uh, their first customers with our high speed fiber optic internet uh, program. And um, so they're very happy about that. And it's testing the, the system, and the governor was involved. So has anyone from the board advised them that we're giving them 5,000? I have not. It's on my list of things to talk to say. You know, we're doing this, but I wanted to sit down with Melissa and go through this list uh -huh. of ARPA, uh -huh. making sure that our we're ducks are in a row. And now she knows that this is going to be the check will be cut for this and that. And, and how much we have left. And all right. That, yeah. So they sent um, out a uh, DV Fiber sent out a report within the last 48 hours uh, and reported the town's the status of where they are. Right. And they reported the towns and they still have us in at 10,000. Yes, it, right. Yeah. So I see. Yeah. Um, I also want to let you know that I've um, realized that the local emergency management plan adoption needs to occur in April. And I, uh, once the portal opens, I will complete that. There shouldn't be too many changes to that uh, local emergency management plan. But uh, I'm aware of that, and I'm aware that it needs to be uh, taken care of. Um, and. I'm trying. I think the rest of it will come under. Oh, um, I have uh, submitted the RFP uh, to the Brattleboro Reformer and Wyndham Regional and several other companies that were recommended uh, for the local hazard mitigation planning services that we got the BRIC grant for. So that's. That should be uh, in the papers this week. It was in uh, this morning. Okay. So it's going to be um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday because of the because it was a federal. So we needed to do it a little bit more days. But um, I just put a little blurb and I referred them to the website. The website has the actual mm -hmm. RFP laid, laid out. I also received these uh, from the state of Vermont. Melissa executed it. That is the uh, the first of the FEMA will should be coming from the storm. Um, so that's been that's approximately the twelve thousand dollars that was done from Whitney Hill and, uh -huh. and such. So that came in, and I think the rest of it I'll just cover on the communications unless we can. Okay. okay. Um, so any other reports or discussion from the select board? We've already covered some of it. We talked about the wheeled excavators, the search of the size and the weights and the attachments that might. So we need to think about 
you know, what is it that we need? Oh, he only has. Yeah, but we need to make a list. Yeah, but we need to. We, we're down to March to April first. You want to do something a month from now? We need to have yeah. something like that. Find something. Pretty, pretty we can do. If forward. I should receive information, I'll forward it. Yeah, yeah or me texting whatever. We do a special something. meeting or something and approve it. Uh, if it's going through the uh, state, we don't have to go through the town, so we can approve it belongs to three of us. What are we talking about? I'm now? talking about a purchase of, a, of anything you might find. Oh, yeah. Or consideration of purchase. And then we have to go In consideration. Right. That's what I mean by that. Right. Um, and I'm certainly using an email uh, to, to notify residents and stuff. We're not trying to trying to sure, pull the rug out from anybody, but um, we got to be more expeditious in, in our stuff because we we we're we're, we're, yeah. Um, also, want to let you know. I think it was shared that the Brattleboro uh, Brookline Meeting House uh, Building Condition Assessment uh, by John. Sakoshio. Sakoshio. Uh, there was an email that they sent that that he was the one that was recommended. He was the same one that you had found that was in Brattleboro. Right. Right. And there is some kind of a grant that they are looking to get that uh, conditions assessment. It's like Lewandowski new oh, new, yes. new one. So well, we got a grant for that. that that's what they're that, That's what they're working on right now. So that okay. would be um two other things that come to select board. Um, if there's nothing else, any other discussions that you want to have at this time? Yes, sir. There was a gentleman who uh, emailed me. Uh, there was interest expressed in terms of our executive assistant to the select board. There may be interest in that person doing that. The same Second. person indicated that he might also be interested in doing the minutes to the select board meetings, yeah. uh, but he didn't make any any firm commitment. Okay. He, he asked about it. He asked what we were expecting. I gave him, you know, the the rates: twenty dollars an hour, twenty dollars uh, twenty hours a month, maximum forty eight hundred dollars. Basically, being a support to the select board, doing emails for us, letters, research, investigation, and so on, and so communication, all of that sort of stuff, and. Uh, so uh, they asked how long it takes me to do the minutes. I told them three and a half to six hours. That's what it's been, varying on how long we meet. Uh, and uh, uh, and then, of course, they've got those they can look at on our that's website. Really so so uh, that's uh, that's something that we I didn't know about till today, that that person, you may mention that you knew of someone that might be interested. So I thought I'd piggyback on your your, your uh, exposure of uh, not mentioning names, but if there is another person out there. That would have just been for possibly taking some minutes. Okay. Um, but uh, Well, it's it, not worth knowing. If yeah. this guy doesn't want to do it, it's nice to Correct, another correct. Um, but, but, uh, is our rate not high based on a person sitting here in on a three-hour meeting and then transposing it to paper? We, we pay well, for 75, the, 75 for, for the select board minutes twice a month. And uh, as far as administrative assistance, no, I'm talking about just just uh, um, the uh, the min the minutes. It averages five hours at fifteen dollars. Comes out to seventy five dollars. Okay. Do I like doing it? Absolutely. Since I'm here already, you know, to me, I'm going through it a second time, which, yes. frankly, I find no, very helpful. Yeah, I I realized yes. how well that did uh, in the last meeting. I mean, that was a very difficult meeting for all of us. Uh -huh. And 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 when you look at it as a you know, after having slept a few days, not even thought thinking about it, and you watch it, it was well done. And so that that was good to see. And there were things that, you know, as I'm sitting here thinking about something that per person A says and then someone else offers, and you're trying to put this together and you want to offer yeah, a comment. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just want to listen and understand it. Yeah. You it's it's difficult to make sure you don't miss anything. So I find looking at the video is really, really good. Oh. I get the whole thing over again. I can sit there and I got a laptop here that's playing the video, and I have the other it. computer with the speaker I that I can it. that if I don't want to type it, I can dictate it in. Uh -huh. So it's start, and if I didn't get it, I can go back, yeah. and play it again. Yeah. So that ability to to play and replay, stop and start, is just fantastic. So you feel five hours is is reasonable at. $15 and a half. But you also have to realize. I could cut time and just be a lot more 
abbreviated. Right. But but right. what I find with the, with other minutes that have happened, and that's not to put anybody down. Mm -hmm. When you're mentioning under a topic three, four, five different items, and you reference it, but you don't indicate what the conversation was. It's hard to put some of those thoughts together. Sure. What was really talked about there? Sure. So I don't mind doing what I'm doing okay. because I've had people email me and say. I like what you're doing. I understand. I like that. I like that. So no, that doesn't okay. mean it's better than somebody else's. It just means that right. I understand it better saying it that way. It jogs my memory and anyone else who wants to read the minutes as to what happened. And, and the, the opportunity exists that if you were misunderstood, to say, you know, I hear where you're going. I, I was close to what you said. This is what I really intended. You know, so there's a way of correcting and making things more right. understandable for the public. I found That's this right. easier to read. I went through read the whole thing with little little scrapes here and there. Oh God, it take me 15 minutes to go through that. Never before has it taken me 15 minutes. It takes longer mm -hmm. after page after page. This for some reason, the way you format it was just easier for me to read it. I don't know why, but it just it was more explicit and to the point. Um Anyway, I liked it better. Even I got Thank you. I like Peter. I liked it better than Peter. So, if you are not a member of the select board and you are separate and you're watching, that you can be typing at and at the same during the time instead of going through it twice. Uh -huh. But you know that, that you get to get some skill level developed. I mean, the uh -huh. first first time you do minutes, the second time you do you know, well, so you've been, he didn't ever really watch the minutes that he unless he had to. Unless he, he had to, he, he was, just he just did. He it. worked it that that way. Yeah, yeah. that's some he has. Exceptional talent. Not yeah, many yeah. people can do that. That's but right. Pat and I were talking I'll about bet. at home, and she I'll said, bet. "You know, when we have minutes at some of our meetings, she says there are certain people who can be talking, typing, and understanding right. everything, and have the minutes for you the next day." Right. That's what Peter. I'm not that. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to yeah. um, So we're down to anything else under any other discussions for the select before we go into communications. Oh, uh, the Goldman and the, the legislators thing. Okay, is that coming up? Yeah. Okay. 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 Under communications, we did get um, an email from the Vermont Bond Bank with that information in it, um, and and so we're going to work work with that. That's um, the first one. Correct. We, there's also um, okay, that's the one I just attended. Okay. My bond bank email essential select board training opportunities. Once we have some, if we get some new select board members elected next week, there is a, 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 a we, went to, we went one year to Rutland and to, yeah, right. but there is a select board training opportunities for a new people. Um, we did get the AR permit portal notice. Guy had sent us an email saying he wasn't sure if it was, uh, uh, what's it called? Scammer, scam or not? But um, I went into it, and it's, it's the portal with our the new portal. Um, both Leslie Goldman and Michelle Boslam has asked about attending our select our town meeting. Um, and based upon an, an earlier conversation, not knowing about how much time we were going to need to get through our 17 or 18 articles, uh, I've invited them to consider coming in an April uh, select board meeting. Now I know uh, having uh, representatives and such come here and keeping them involved in our Brookline is important. I wish that if it was a daytime meeting, the end could be anywhere two o'clock, three o'clock or four o'clock, but a nighttime meeting, we're pretty much gonna go six to nine, six to nine thirty. Yeah, and I'm people are gonna stay to nine thirty. I have but, suggestions so, if I can. Go ahead. I would suggest we tell the town on Monday to keep in keep in mind that we're going to have them show up as like yeah, well, I so they can still in or come in. I, I can certainly put that out there. Sure. This this takes because I was concerned about that realistically in light that we haven't had a meeting in three years and the town has had no opportunities so other than pace. too direct right to, to, to talk to them right. and I thought that that was a just concern. one comment. Uh, I believe they have this week and maybe next week off between the beginning and end of their session. session. And when they go back in after this week or next week, 
I believe they go into May. So there may not be, well, be an option in April to have them okay. do that. I don't know. Right. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't not ask them, sure. but sure. but if they say they're not able to, that's why. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I did get an email from a resident. There was a question about the safety of the mail delivering persons and people picking up mail from the mailbox bank located at the bottom of Harris Hill, right directly across from Harris Hill. There was, I guess they observed the car coming down and sliding because of the hill and sliding a little bit into the road. And, and if there was somebody at the mailboxes, um, is that something that we do about that? Too. Would be to move them. Oh. And I know we moved mailboxes when we did the corner of Curse Road and when we paved there, but uh, those so something to bring up in this. We can't do anything right now with the weather, but oh, it's something I'd like for you to take a look at. Um, it's How many are there? Four. So we have to notify the residents that we're going to do that. Yeah, I'd have to look again. At Would you take a look at that? Yeah. I mean, this is something that we don't have to worry about it now, but it is something I went and looked and I said, oh, yeah, it really is. Like if a car continued to slide, it would go right in there. And yeah. when mail is being delivered, it's on that bend. And as you right. come around, there could be a car halfway out in the road. So it may not be the safest location. Um, and I, I didn't think it was. We, since this past okay. practice, we've moved mailboxes for safety for right. other things. It wouldn't be an expensive thing to no. consider. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. All right. Uh, it was also a question um, uh, Barbara Bourne brought up that the cemetery that on Hill Road really could use to uh, a fence. And there is a law about having a fence around a cemetery when there are horses or dog, horses or cows or nearby, because if the animals got out and walked in the cemetery, it could go fall through and damage it, so on and so forth. Um, oh. as, a, as, a, as I'm finishing my fifth, year as a cemetery commissioner, um, I have not gotten the commission to really be proactive on too much of anything. Uh, I also believe that the that cemetery commission really needs to review their finances. And I'm going to ask Melissa about that because I think that that their $200 a plot fee is not enough to cover even the mowing going forward, nonetheless purchasing a fence. Might that be something if that if the town is approached to use ARPA funds to purchase a fence, that's one thing for $1,000, which is uh, one that Howard and I and Barbara went and saw two years ago over at Kipps at the auction. He's got okay. quite a bit, and I have pictures of it. But at this time, I, I told Mrs. Warren, I said, look, I don't think I'm going to run for the commission again. It might be something that you might want to do. Lori now has asked to run for the commission because uh -huh. she wants to take her mother's spot on that. Uh -huh. um, I intended on as a cemetery commissioner to try to get everything set up digitally and try to get all of the lots organized uh, on a map, but I have not been able to get Mr. Oscar to completely provide time to do that. So it you know, hasn't gotten done. So five years of are those uh, lots all spoken for all sold? No, they're not all sold. Uh, I heard but I, they, they aren't. I would like to see the map updated. Yeah. And that's what I tried to do. Um there uh, Mrs. Penny Massey, who has since passed away, did provide funding to clear another acre of land up at the Austin Cemetery, which is next to the Serbo Farm, which used to be the Massey Farm. Okay. And at some point that there are plots that can be purchased, would not be okay. able to bring equipment into the cremations yeah. could be used that cemetery. But that's not yeah. part of the Cemetery Commission's realm. That's a select board's realm. And I know Penny Massey's family will be asking the select board yeah. to allow her to, her remains to be interred this summer at some, at some, with her husband at some point. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to let you know about this, the cemetery fencing uh, yeah. question. What, what, what was the fencing we were looking at? Was it cast iron? It was a uh, an antique cast iron Fence. I have pictures I can show you yeah. um, that I took, but the springtime is when you have to get it out of kips because if you wait to the summer or fall, all of the weeds grow yeah. in and around it, yeah, and you yeah. would never be able to to get it out. Where's kips? 
Uh, the Kit auction Martin. barn in Townsend next to the smoke shop. Kit Martin. Kit Martin. Okay. Yeah, so he would be, he would love to see the town. Is there and enough footage? There is. There is. There is. There there is. is. So um, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. The was fencing it was removed, uh, wasn't replaced, <laughs> and there is some. Um, yeah. I thought Mr. Welmer wasn't too sure that it applied to us, but it does apply to all towns whose cemeteries are near or adjacent to animal farms, and there's a horse stable yeah. right there. I had raised this issue back. Uh, almost two years ago. Sure. And and uh, so yeah, I it, my understanding is there there needs to be a fence around a cemetery like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Were you looking to go all the way around? No, the front. Uh, there was one there before, but it's, and, uh, and decomposed and Tony totally right. it out. There is a weak fence along that road that goes down yeah. to Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we did clear the brush from around the front and back of the fence around the, those three sides, north, oh, yeah. but not but not the uh, hill roadside needs to be addressed. Okay. So uh, it's okay. something that the that cemetery commission needs to be reminded of and charged with. So um, okay. yeah, I, I just wanted to throw out another if uh, maybe locust fence fencing along the front if that's okay. another option. If, the iron doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's true. Work is less. less we already know that. Time. Even even so, Stan yeah. looked that up. Right. We were talking about Greer Bridge, yeah. second hardest wood in the world. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, when yeah. you looked that yeah. up, I remember yeah. that for all these years. My memory worked. Well, we out. have some, don't we? Left over from. Oh, we, we, have, we were thinking uh, using that yeah. in the fence post at the pan field. I think there's still have some. I don't know how much. Four or six uh, twenty footers left there. Oh boy. Yeah. That's 80 feet. That's a lot of footage. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's something that we'll see or we'll come back again. Just finishing yes. up on the communications. Um, Southern Southeastern Vermont Housing Coalition is having a Zoom meeting. Uh, um, if anyone is interested in attending and talking about the um, barriers and opportunities to housing in, in our community. I'm not sure about at the time, but um, that was one thing. Um, and I guess we're down to. Did it have anything to do with the meeting that happened last night in uh, New Fane mm -hmm. at the church? No. Oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> oh, there was one other thing. Let's see if we did here. Hang on. Um, back to when I was talking about this thing in the mail today. Um, there's a, it's a uh, questions for towns and cities. and. They sent it out this week, however, and they said if you can get it on your agenda for town meeting, now anybody knows you got to get a town meeting agenda it has to be posted more than a week ahead of time. Right. But some of the questions would be would be uh, for hazard mitigation. We'll probably have to survey the town for our brick grant, but it involves you know who in our community are most harmed by the and have the most difficult time recovering from a national hazard like Ed. Ed uh, Schaefer's house. Yeah. Uh, how does the town get information about the needs and interests from the communities and uh, what have we prepared for significant weather events? And uh, what would you like to do to protect your residents? And what would you need to make this happen? And if funding is needed, what are the two biggest barriers to obtaining funding? Well, of course, we need equipment. So anyway, so this is something that we will also be serving the, the town on. Especially about the Brattleboro reformer, and that's it for now. If you don't mind, I'm going to go to accounts payable. Don't mind at all. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> um, all right, let me look at mine because I need to look on mine. This is the first one. Okay, all right, this is it. All right, um, and I'll modify it during discussion. I'd like to make a motion to approve check warrant number 2334, dated March 1st, 2023, in the amount of $10,816.69. May I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Mello. Any discussion? My discussion is that the falling of stone 
check number 1687 in the amount of $2,800. And the quarry stone, oh, okay, quarry stone was listed as summer highway material, so that's fine. Okay. The hauling of the stone, the service of hauling of the stone by A.S. Clark and Sons should be moved to summer services, correct? Yeah. Okay. So with, that's the only modification I would have on here. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving accounts payable 2334 in the amount of $10,816.69 as amended. Be signified by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. motion passes. Okay, David Jones will be asked to come and sign the checks because Melissa is out of the country at this time. Where'd she go? They can work. Yeah. I think it was, it was NASA going up, up to the moon. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of NASA lately. Yeah. They're going to the moon next year. Yeah, well, see, they should have been training. <laughs> yeah, okay. You want me to call you so far? What do you think is fair? I'm All just right, trying so to be humorous at the end of a long day. day. So I'll have you sign that. Oh, and I did ask again, uh, Judy, about the invoice amount and statement amount for the salvage. And she says, that by paying the invoiced amount, sometimes they send bills and by paying it the invoiced amount, it works out at more accurately, even though it looks inaccurate on here because we'll sign a check this week for there's two checks this week. So the, it just keeps compounding. By paying the actual invoice amount, it's best for her to keep track of everything. And they find that also acceptable to do it that way. So okay. thank you for following up. All right, payroll warrant. I'd like to make a motion to approve payroll check warrant number 2335 dated March 1st, 2023 in the amount of $1,980.77. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Stan Noga. Any discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of approving payroll warrant 2335 and $1,980.77 signify by saying aye. 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 Same motion passes unanimously. Please sign it. Okay. The agenda for the March 15th meeting will consist mainly of the reorganization agenda for the appointments uh, for the select board. No, um, we will also be opening the bids for the RIC grant for the hazard mitigation program. Um, we will also, I want to make sure that we re-vote or completely vote for the $15,000 from the Brookline meeting yeah. house in case it was not clarified on that meeting and, and yeah. anything else that may come up about us at this time. Okay. All right, um, if there's nothing else, I'd like to make a motion. I'm gonna adjourn the meeting. The meeting is- It's at 844. <laughs> a second.